Welcome to WP Tonic, Episode 75, Year in Review for WordPress. Today, we got our favorites back, Sally, John, Jonathan, and me. You know, when I look back, so much happened, Jonathan and the team, in WordPress this year, a lot, and I, I think next year is going to be a tremendous change. What do you think? Looks like it, doesn't it, folks? Go on, I, Sally. I, I expect we'll see quite a lot of, uh, of things happening in the uh, exciting world of JavaScript, uh, which I'm annoyed about having to learn since I've barely started to master PHP properly. Um, uh, but uh, I think we will see a, a, a lot of stuff branching off and a lot of stuff that probably is pretty similar to what it was. Um, but I think we've we've made some, you know, some interesting changes. That, uh, I'm curious to see who Automatic will acquire next year. Yeah, it's just a shame it can't be me. <laughs> I, I just hope one day, one day Matt will email me, here's a big check, Jonathan, we want a quality maintenance company, you know. But we can all dream, can't we, Sally? Yes, well, I think they have underpaid staff at Automatic for that. Oh, don't break my bubble. <laughs> be nice to me. <laughs> You've got to dream somewhere. Go on, John. So, what, what, you know, it's going to be the end of WordPress. You no know, PHP 7, JavaScript, themes breaking. Is it, you know, is the world going to collapse and WordPress finished, you know? Well, much like the uh, overhyped uh, Mayan end of the world, I, I don't think that WordPress is going to end. Uh, I think this is not the ending, but the beginning as we enter the next phase uh, with JavaScript coming to the forefront. Oh, right. Yeah. So uh, I don't know how to take this on. Go on, Sally. So what do you think? What's been some of, some of your high spots in the WordPress world in 2016? Any particular things and people that you want to bring up? Uh, well, I've, uh, you know, I, I sat down to write a year in review post. I hooked up with some great people I'm collaborating with uh, this year, and I became the go-to person for the events calendar, uh, kind of by accident. But but I wrote some tutorials to remind myself how I fixed things, and um, the Modern Tribe people posted them on their support forum. So I get tons of people visiting my site asking me questions about the events calendar. So then I write more tutorials, so then it becomes kind of a a a, 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 a a self-fulfilling prophecy, as it were. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm curious to see where Calypso and the JavaScript and, and all of that stuff goes. I think people can, you know, on the one hand, people will be able to do some great custom work for their enterprise customers. And on the other hand, we will not have a single consistent experience of WordPress, which might be tough for those folks who make, you know, commercial how to do WordPress videos. Um well, you made a great point because I, um, I thought your presentation at Sacramento, I, I, I discussed it with John on the air on one of our episodes. I thought your presentation at uh, Sacramento WordCamp was really quite astute and really a quite interesting presentation, Sally, because you made me think about UX design and, you know, when you linked it to familiarity of other designs like Word. So if you want to make something easy to use, you might you base it on a popular bit of software that most people use. I think I'm, I'm kind of getting to the core of your presentation. Do correct me if I'm wrong. Right. But, I mean, that's but, uh, kind of the point is things are easy if they're f easier if they're familiar, and WordPress is not very familiar. You know, and then we, like what you just said with these new custom interfaces, which is great if you're – if you're making a bit of software for in-house for a large corporation, you know some, you know a shop like Ten Up must be really quite happy. But for other people, um, it, it's to me WordPress is too spread out already. It needs more condensing and clarifying where certain, you know, it's a bit like a plugin. You know, find the settings of a plugin. It could be under settings could be under appearance. I've known it sometimes be under tools. The settings could be in the plugin pane. It could be anywhere, couldn't they? Mm -hmm. a, you know, that's a bit of a mix-up already, isn't it, Sal? Are they, are they gonna... It's true. And, you know, one of the reasons for using WordPress is that so many other people use it and know how to use it. But if you customize your site to the point where someone is hardly going to recognize it as WordPress, then who is it that's going to be able to take over if you get hit by a bus? 
Exactly, because um, I, you know, I, I've got to admit my crimes. I was forced into it. That's my defence, Sally. I have had to utilise Joomla uh, and Expression Engine, and that was one of the problems with those couple of um, competitors. I've never done any work with Drupal. It, you know, after the time, it took me like two hours to find where something had been set up. There were so many different options and pains. And trying to teach somebody that only occasionally went in was good luck to you, as far as I found. They're always ringing up asking you. So I don't really want to see WordPress going down that route. What do you reckon, John? Well, I definitely think that WordPress has to uh, kind of find an identity. <clears throat> and I think Chris Lemma like, wrote about it earlier this year when he said the 25% isn't that impressive because if we're trying to um, move upstream and get into the territory where Drupal is, it's really not that different. WordPress and Drupal are really not that different, but Drupal is used for a lot of these enterprise and government types of websites because it's perceived as being more stable. Whether that or not that's reality, that's the way that it's been marketed and branded, and therefore that's the way it's perceived. So I think all the things that are happening now, Clipso, the REST API, that's going to entice a lot more talent to jump onto WordPress. But I think positioning WordPress uh, to get that enterprise segment of the market is going to be the real challenge. And I think it has to overcome... Uh, the 12 or 13 years of its identity as blogging software uh, to do that. So, Yeah, I think it is really, uh, you know, I do, I'll put this to you, Sally. I, um, I know a couple really hardcore PHP programmers in Reno, and when I ever mention WordPress, they kind of stick their nose up and they, they mumble something like spaghetti code. And they mumble, you know, you're supposed to have day logic and presentation totally separate. And they mumble some more. What do you reckon about this? Because I, I can see it, but but the reality of utilising something like Drupal or, Jump or Expression Engine where the data and the presentation is supposed to be more separate, the reality is that I think they've got their own problems. What What do you think, Sally? I think any system has its has its drawbacks. Um, you know, the the thing that was supposed to be really exciting about Drupal eight, which I believe finally came out, was the front end editing, um, so that you know your client would never have to deal with the complicated bits of setting it up. Um, and, you know, it, it's always been built with a slightly more enterprise audience in, in mind and with a lot of different levels of user access control and, and that kind of thing, which is good when you have a large organization, you know, and, and WordPress shows, if you know, if you look at the way the database tables are structured and, and everything else, it shows its origins as a, a blogging platform. It's extremely versatile. You can do a lot with it, but there is kind of this split of, you know, the attempt to still be something fairly simple and blog oriented with WordPress.com. And that's really what, you know, Calypso is about. Calypso, as it is, is there to help you write blog posts. It doesn't even do pages very well. Yeah. It's, it's really there for writing blog posts. And it's, it's a nice interface for that if you don't mind having to go over to WordPress.com, assuming you're on your own site. Yeah, but, what, was, what was that? What was that? It's still going. What's that Mac app that allowed you to do a similar thing. You don't, you don't, oh, what's it called? Um, oh, there's an app that allowed you to communicate with WordPress and you could do your posts. I can't rem- well, there used to be a bunch of offline blog editors that used XML RPC. And, and those kind of fell out of favor. And, you know, this is something that's using uh, one of the APIs. It's not because the WordPress.com thing, it's not exactly the same as the REST API that's being built into into the self-hosted WordPress. Um, and, you know, you can if you can download the app, and I tested the app on both the Mac and the PC, and then you start the app and you can work on whatever blog you've connected to that WordPress.com account. But if you're actually in your own site, uh, self-hosted site, you have to go through this slightly contorted path to go over to WordPress.com to use the new interface. It doesn't, like, overlay it on your on your site. It's, it's a very peculiar sort of thing. And 
Um, you know, I heard this, uh, read this interview with Laurel Van Fossen, um, who teaches university courses on WordPress, and she said her students threw a fit when Calypso was introduced. They were so confused, and they wanted to put the old way back. That's the way. Um, what, so shall we go on to the restless, uh, I'm not restless, <laughs> the responsive image and it, it being placed into core. And there's been you know, people saying it doesn't exactly really work that well. Um, I haven't, pardon me, um, I haven't um, really played around with it that much or study it. That's one of my on my list. So what do you reckon about that, um, John? Is it? Been, is it a pretty kind of successful kind of solution to the responsive image? Or is it, you know, some people say it doesn't really work fantastic. Well, you got any experiences with it and thoughts about that? I guess I haven't really noticed any big difference because most of the time um, I'm trying to keep images within a, a responsive container to begin with. But I know that the larger web community uh, overall has been working on responsive images and a solution for that for quite a few years uh, now. So integrating it into WordPress core, I think is really big news. Um, definitely because um, I think it will make it easier for people to develop. It's just one less thing uh, to cause a pain point. So, yeah, well, I'm always, a, I'm always feel a bit guilty when I got to admit I've not been, but, um, I was on a blab, um, and the great John from, um, um, Plugin Weekly came on and he admitted that he hadn't messed around with PHV 7 that much. So it made me feel a bit better. I, was like, I just can't keep up with it all. So, um, I've been giving the sign folks. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to go into a little break and I'm going to take my little, my co-host take over the wizard, Bill Conrad. Want to turn your WordPress website into an online speed machine? Go on over to WP Tonic. They'll set up DigitalOcean websites hosting on solid state drives. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for WP Tonic's maintenance packages. WP Tonic offers some of the very best WordPress maintenance packages on the market. So those who are serious about getting the very best platform for their WordPress sites, make sure you go on over to wp-tonic.com. Oh, Kim, Kim has joined us um, and joined our panel for our end of the year. So, um, and Bill's gone into the background, the wizard. So, so Groundhog Day again, Sally, what do you think of responsive what is imaging? What's wrong with feeling? Are you hoping that if you ask me this question often enough, I might change my answer? I was um, hoping, actually. Yes. No, I, I, I like uh, the steps that have been taken so far in terms of uh, responsive images. Uh, there's an article in Smashing Magazine about this, which helps give you some guidance if you are a theme developer uh, on how to handle this so that any custom sizes you have created uh, for featured images will also be included. Because what it does is it picks the next size of image that is in the same aspect ratio. So if you have images that are like 16 by 9 for featured images and your regular, uh, you know, small, medium and large images are square, it's not going to pick a square image to uh, to replace that with. So, um, which, you know, which is good because otherwise you'd get funny displays on mobile and you'd have no idea what things were looking like. But if you don't actually have a smaller version of, of that image in that ratio, it's it's not going to work. So I want to research that further and then I'll probably be doing a little bit of uh, uh, tidying up work for my various clients that I've built themes for over the last year. All right. What do you reckon, Kim? I loved how Sally just explained that because um, I don't think people really are understanding what it's doing. And I'd only looked into it a little bit as far as the responsiveness. And what I'm finding is it still does depend on what theme you're using as to what you see. You know, at least with some of them so I'm using, some I'm, I'm using seem to be doing it really well. And some, I don't know if they've got something in there overriding it or what, but it's still been problematic. I, I haven't really studied it enough. Um, so, can you can you give a Sally? Do you are you up to giving a quick or John? Maybe ask John because um, I picked on Sally already five times. Um, That's John, fine. Sally can, can you, take it. <laughs> <laughs> do, 
John, John doesn't want this one with it. Oh, you don't want it. All right, Sally. How does this plugging work then? Uh, I couldn't describe it from from the technical end, but what it does is is it replaces. You know, all of you remember from your HTML days. You insert an image. It's you know, image SRC equals. Now you have this thing called SRC set. SRC meaning standing for source anyway. So your source set, and it says okay. We have all we have these images to choose from that are in the right aspect ratio, and depending on the size of the device, you'll pick which one of those images to send out, so that you don't pick the biggest, you know, the full sized image to send to the people using their phones, because you know even that great big iPhone 6s is is not going to you know hold your four megapixel uh, photo. Uh, so. Uh, you know, I think once there's been a little time for it to settle in and for theme developers to get used to using it, it's going to make a big difference in um, page load time for people who are on mobile devices. All right. Well, thanks for that. Yeah, um, can you explain that again? For <laughs> I don't mean that. Uh, um, oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bill wants you to explain that again. Um, um, let's, move, let's move on, shall we? Um, so I just wanted to if any of you want to comment what's going on in Theme Forest. You know, obviously they brought out these, um, they've, the company was Australian. Now they're going to, um, they've got an LLC based in the United States. They're going to be charging um Taxation. They change their terms of conditions. They seem to be trying to get rid of a lot of their, um, a lot of people in some ways because they've, you know, the kind of the cut they want has caused a lot of upset in the in the theme forest. You know, the people that make themes for it. You got any insights, Sally? What theme forest up to? I haven't even noticed anything was happening with with them. I have occasionally. I uh, got things from Code Canyon, but uh, in general, I avoid theme forest themes like the plague and ad- advise my clients to do so as well. And, uh, you know, they're not going to be getting rid of those top selling themes that have 16 slider plugins built in and are just like waving at, at people saying, please hack me, hack me before my before my creator has time to update. <laughs> yeah. What about you, John? Have you been following that at all and got any faults? Okay, so I don't really buy uh, things from Scheme Forest at all, uh, but I did Scheme. hear. What was that Scheme Forest? Did you say? <laughs> but I did hear a podcast uh, where I think I I believe it was Jonathan Atkinson, and I don't know, I can't remember like who he is with. It might have been Carrie Dills, it might have been somebody else, but he was. I think that was Matt. Um, the Matt Madeiros. Report. Yeah, Madeiros, okay. Yeah. Okay. So he was talking about that, and he was basically saying, now I have noticed that they're making theme authors offer an extended six months of support, uh, or they won't list their themes, but basically for the theme author, they're having to sell that extra six months of support at basically not a lot of money. And what I was getting for um, uh, like, you know, like a premium theme author, um, is basically you're going to get like shafted on the support. Uh, you're going to have to like sell things at the same uh, amount that the other themes are selling them at. And that's really not the direction that the theme market should be going because everything is so fragmented. If you're not, you say if you're X theme or you're Avada, you're making good money and you can support like all the people who are coming in. But if you're basically anyone else, you're really struggling to support stuff or even upkeep it or even make a living. Uh, if you're not on that first page of themes, you're, you know, you're kind of struggling. Most themes don't sell that many. So you're putting all these man hours um, and woman hours into making a theme and you're not making the sales back. Um, you know, and I remember a few years ago, a lot of the theme uh, authors just in general we're saying that that's not the market needs to go like up and charge more for themes, specialized themes, uh, charge more to where it's a sustainable business, and that's kind of not the direction that it's going. So, yeah, I think that was a good. What do you reckon, Kim? I agree with them. I am not a. I'm not a huge fan, and that's true. If you're one of the really big ones, you're doing well. Although I 
have to say a couple of those really big ones are some of the really scary ones that Sally was just talking about. I would run like heck from them. But yeah, I think for the developer, I'm not a theme developer, but I think for the developers, it's it's a losing image unless you're a losing proposition unless you just happen to be one of those one of those few guys. Yeah, well, he kind of uh, I listened to the Matt report and Jonathan. What was his second name? And John? Atkinson, I believe. Atkinson. Yeah. I think they're based in Portland. Actually, I have to get him on the show. Actually, you should. Um, um, he's only a great guy, and he's English as well. So, <laughs> uh, um, so, um, but I, I was trying to work out what they're exactly up to because one of the strengths of theme forest, for good or bad, is they had a lot of choice. You know, in design terms, you didn't exactly ever know what you were going to get in code terms. But they had some. They did have some. They got and still do have some really great developers. Jonathan's one of them. Him and his wife. Um, so it's not all bad news on there. I'm not a fan of these really top popular ones like what Kim's just mentioned. That's got, you know, reckon they can do everything. Um, I've had some bad experiences with those. Um, but on the other hand, they're big enough to give the support. So it really is a kind of mixed bag. But I, I don't know exactly. I think they're just... I don't exactly understand what they're up to, really, because they do seem to be what's going to happen with what I heard they're going to do is a lot of the smaller people are going to drop out. So the diversity is going to be drastically reduced and you're going to be left with a much smaller um, um, group of theme options from them. So, uh, you know, obviously they've taken that decision, it, um for various reasons, maybe they just felt that, that you know the support or lack of support was damaging them to some extent. I don't really know. I don't think anybody, unless you were in one of the inner crowd, would probably know that. Do you, what do you reckon, John? Do you think I'm talking any sense, or I'm just dribbling? No, it makes sense. They realize that their image, their public image in the developer community, is bad, and so they're trying to fix that. Uh, you know, the average person that just is going to spend a hundred bucks and no more on building a site, those people are going to be locked in and, and they're going to go to Envato anyway. But for web agencies that rely on theme forest or don't know about a theme foundry or, uh, an up themes or anywhere else where they could get a decent quality theme, uh, they rely very heavily on theme forest. And so that's where they're trying to uh, do some PR. But yeah. it yeah. would be a shame for the good quality themes to get basically out of the market there. It would be bad. I think we're going for another break, folks. This is Bill. Karen and I have been licensed real estate brokers since 1990, and we know how important buying or selling a home can be. Our free relocation services use a certified residential specialist who are the highest credentialed real estate agents, managers, and brokers in the industry. For absolutely no cost or obligation, we will help you find and certify your next CRS professional real estate agent. If you're moving across country or just across town, call me at 775-233-8065 or visit karenconrad.com forward slash relocation for this free service. Additionally, when you use one of our CRS agents, you are helping us support this podcast. And we will give you or a family member a complimentary Lifetime Masters membership to Netcasting 101. Also, if you are selling or buying a home in the greater Reno Tahoe area, I know who the best CRS real estate broker is, and that's Karen Conrad. Okay, we're coming back off the break, and this is the last break of the year. This is December 31st, so this is the last show. But I want to thank Jonathan for putting this together about two years ago. He's the producer of the show. I'm the engineer backside guy, and I bring the business person perspective to WordPress. The people I have met from all our panel, we've got an amazing panel, about 10 people come on as regulars. Sally and John, you are really top-notch coming on. Kim's on today. And we have something we didn't have at the start of the year. We've got Blab and which really allows us to get some good thought and understanding and, and fix things and talk about WordPress. So I'm looking forward to next year to actually engineering and working the backside of this show, Jonathan's producing, and that we have go to number one, because right now we've climbed from 30th to number six in the WordPress community. And there's about 100 people in our category on iTunes. And remember, folks, 
this is only about a 25 to 30 minute iTunes show. And that's what the, you know, that's the, uh, the stats we get, but we're on YouTube. You can listen, you can listen live now. Thank everybody. So Jonathan, a uh, couple minutes, finish up and that's it for the year. John and Sally, great job. And Kim, you'll be back on YouTube as soon as we finish up here. Thanks, Bill. Thank you for your support, Bill. It's been right then, Sally. What's you know? What's your highlight of two thousand fifteen when it comes to WordPress? Got any couple things that stuck in your mind that you thought were highlights? Gosh, you know, I, and, and I feel so stupid. I need to go back and edit my. Um, I need to edit my year in review post because I forgot to mention this panel. Uh, and uh, participating in this panel has been tremendous fun. And, you know, I always feel smarter whenever I get to talk to Morton. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's been a great number of people. So it's, you know, it's very educational to be part of. Um, and um, that's definitely been a, a, a positive new thing in my WordPress life. And um, another highlight would definitely be speaking at WordCamp Sacramento. I'd never spoken at a WordCamp before. I was incredibly nervous. I hardly slept the night before. Uh, and it was just terrific. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the video is finally up. I've got a link to it on my blog. So um, I, if you uh, if you want to watch that uh, and weren't there, you can do it. And I'm I'm uh, hoping to do more uh, speaking at WordCamps in the future. Yeah, I, I wouldn't not just because you're my friend and you're on the panel. I, I I thought it really was a good, fantastic presentation, Sally. Um, and you, it was quite thought provoking, actually. So, John, um, any highlights? <laughs> any high what's your highlights for 2015 around wordpress um 2015 really been kind of a breakout year um for me like like this month has actually been my biggest month as far as like revenue uh biggest month as far as like uh people come to my blog um you know, and I like Sally. Um, you know, I never spoke at a WordCamp before. Um, I got to do that. Uh, thought I did all right. Um, Sally did really good. I loved her presentation. Um, I got to be on this panel with some amazing people, like with you and Bill. You guys have been totally gracious, like having me here. But you know, I got to meet a lot of smart and just really cool people, like Adam Silver, uh, Morton, um, Anka. Uh, you know, just like all all uh, all the guests we've had on, Shane Perlman, uh, Pippin, all, just lots of great people. So it's just, you know, it's just helping people in the community. I mean, that's really been the highlight for me, just helping people like um, not just in WordPress, but just, you know, people in general. It's been awesome. Yeah, it's been it's been uh, quite an amazing year when it comes to WP time. I was just thinking of the guests, and they're all been top-notch, you know, Morton. I think they I did invite him, but unfortunately he can't because he, he's in Norway, actually getting totally drunk by now, probably. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so that was his cop out. Uh, but the 50th, our 50th show where he came on and we had like two hours of conversation was quite interesting. Um, I think having the 10 up crowds on, you know, they're great. You know, they're top notch developers, but they're great people as well. I think having Pippin on, I was a bit star star stared. Having you were Pippin starstruck. On, starstruck, thank you. Um, Rebecca Gill was a great guest too. Yes. Oh, Rebecca, she's um, from a bunker somewhere in Detroit. Um, um, Carrie Deals, um, she's always a laugh. Uh, um, she's a bit of a character, isn't she? Um, I think she's the only person that we've done a live interview in, and she did it in her car. I listened uh, to that just. <laughs> last week uh, uh that was quite bizarre but it was a very good link actually but yeah she's a bit of a character to say the least but she's got a great heart um i think one of the things i've learned and it's probably just it's probably cliche but generally you know there's the old one that i've had it's been a bit snotty with me but generally the quality and openness and the genuine like like very likable people in the WordPress community. Um, like I say, it is a bit of a cr cliche, but a lot of it's true, isn't it, Sally, isn't it? Yeah, the community is terrific as a whole. Um, they're normally small business owners or medium-sized business owners, and they're quite a down-to-earth, being through the trenches 
can show the, the knife marks. <laughs> go on over to YouTube. Go to WPTonic-com or go to ublabcast.com, episode 075. We're done with 215. It's almost time for 216. All right. Got to dance. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year.